There are days, no matter how strong we are, where our patience feels like a thin shirt on a cold day. When our heart is a jar crammed full of buzzing bees, what happens when we remove the lid? Would you be surprised if the story of Exodus shows us what happens? Welcome to Seeds for Sunday from wherever you're joining us today. And may this space cup a hand around the ear of your attention. May you hear the word today. There are days we can't start with praise. Days we can't say everything is just fine. And the closest thing to us is the pain of something we are living through. Today, we acknowledge before you where our road is hard. Where the way ahead doesn't look easy. Where we haven't got everything worked out where we wish things were different, where we do not know where it will lead or how it will end. So go with us on this road, for we trust in your company. You will lead us to where we can praise again, to where we can say who we are in your presence and find it acceptable. Find it a matter for gratitude. For this is who you are, the God who calls forth from us the truth. Amen. <laughs> After a long time, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned under their slavery and cried out. Their cries for relief from their hard labour ascended to God. God listened to their groaning. God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. God saw what was going on with Israel. God understood. All you can smell is the smoke from the foundry fire. All you can feel is the next brick in your hands. All you can think about is the brick you've still to make. Your hope never strays beyond the end of this shift until sundown brings a supper that's no match for your hunger. 
and the tiredness in your bones is never relieved by sleep. Before long, the gaffer's voice hollers out as a boot's rough shove wakes you to gather straw, mix mortar from mud and make brick. As long as anyone could remember, the family of Joseph who came down to Egypt lived and died for only one purpose, making brick for Pharaoh. And then we are told something happened. After a long time, the king died. After a long time of being kicked and beaten, after a long time of enduring legislation that killed their children, after a long time of looking into the distance and seeing how the Egyptians lived with a freedom they would never know, the king died. A new one would replace him, and much like a cabinet reshuffle, that change wouldn't mean much to the Hebrews. No new king was going to bring reform. No pharaoh was about to go easier on them. We're told, after a long time, the king died. In the shanty towns of the Hebrew slaves, a sound is rising, never before heard in the Egyptian palaces or their air-conditioned bungalows. Listen, can you hear it? It's the sound of life at its wit's end. It's the sound of Israel crying out. It has taken two chapters for Israel to utter this deep, primitive sound. Like the sound we make when we eventually run out of words to describe what we're going through. When there's nothing left to console us, to comfort, to explain or change what's happening. For some of us, all we have experienced this past year will need space and time to lament what we've lost, who we've lost. Finding that voice isn't necessarily easy or quick. Like the two chapters it takes Israel, sometimes it takes us a long time to articulate in word or tear what we have suffered and willingly or unwillingly what we need to cry out. We're reluctant to do that, I think, because we feel to do so is weak and undignified. But the writers of Exodus profoundly disagree. For Israel to cry out, to lament, is no sign of weakness, but the first step in rebellion. The first step in protest against a painful reality. It's a dignified refusal to collude with what's been harming us or those we love. Lament is to do something with harmful reality. It's a first step through it to freedom. And sometimes, if we are ever to reclaim life as a gift, then there will need to be times when we give voice to our pain and losses. Is there something you need to lament? To give yourself permission to do that is not self-indulgence, it's not weakness. But to tell the truth in such a way that helps us move towards new life. Israel finally finds that voice in slavery, an inarticulate, deep-seated cry. But where does it go? Unheard, unseen, forgotten, misunderstood by Egypt? It rises up until we are told God listened to their groaning. God remembered his covenant. God saw what was happening. God understood. This is where the cry of Israel goes, we are told. This is where Israel's lament, Israel's lament arrives. It brings God into their story. 
What about our cry? Where does our lament go? It's heard through the ears of Jesus, seen through the eyes of Christ, remembered in the wounds, still born in his body, understood by the compassionate heart of God who sent him. In Jesus, our cry is taken up and taken into God himself. God who is wholly human and fully God. Jesus literally carries our sorrows, carries our disappointment, our frustration, carries our anguish and pain, carries the wounds we inflict on ourselves and others. God understands, not from a distance, not even from the distance of a concerned bystander, but by making our lament his own. On the cross, we are invited to listen to the groan of God's love for us. We get to see Jesus carry our lament when he says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? At the Easter tomb, we get to remember the living promise of his risen life, where the hands nailed and stilled by death reach out to wipe away our tears and gift us the life to come, with its forgiveness and peace and joy, even now. And we get to understand how the Jesus who ascends into heaven takes us with him, takes with him our flaws and failures, our wrong turns, our regrets, our sorrows and attempts at believing, and places them into the heart of God. We get to understand how from now on our story is part of God's story because from here on in God refuses to be God without us. So may you find the courage to articulate the hurts and losses that have too long kept you silent. May that be the first step to telling the truth of your story and lament a story that is seen and heard and understood by God, who in Jesus Christ, your brother, saviour and friend, refuses to be God without you. Amen. Excelling joy of heaven to earth come down, fixing us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown, Jesus, thou art all.
Have patience with everything unresolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves as if they were locked rooms or books written in a very foreign language. Don't search for the answers which could not be given to you now because you would not be able to live them. And the point is to live everything. Live the questions now. Perhaps then, someday far in the future, you will gradually, without even noticing it, live your way into the answer.
May the grace of Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Spirit be with us. The Lord bless us and keep us His face shine. His grace and His peace.